Hi, I'm Michael. I'm from Northern Ireland, or it says in English, Northern Ireland. Um, I was born more or less when the troubles started, so the war over there, or it started when I got born, whatever you like to think. A um, couple of wee things, what it's like to grow up in the troubles. We call them the troubles. It's not a war, it's just a wee bit of trouble. Um, one night, I, I actually grew up at the end of my street with an army barracks, so Caserna. And these army barracks was actually where the special forces were stayed whenever they were over in Northern Ireland. With us, the special forces were the shoot the kill, kill soldiers. They went out at night, they did their patrols, and they were allowed to, to shoot the kill if they thought they were in danger. So that was at the end of my street. Normal life. Say good morning to them every day going to school and all that kind of stuff. Now, on a Saturday night, me, a wee six-year-old, with me mum and my brother, he's about ten years older, uh, we're out playing badminton, coming back at ten o'clock, eleven o'clock at night, in the dark, parking the car at the garages and still have to walk three streets away. Now, every night, the soldiers patrol the barracks, but not inside the fences like in Germany. They patrol outside the fences on the streets. So we are just walking up from the garages. <coughs> and all of a sudden, in the darkness, in the shadows of the trees, there is these people standing. Khaki uniforms, black out faces, semi-automatic rifles ready to shoot. And me, the six-year-old, fuck. And I just freeze. I mean, I freeze so much I couldn't even shit. Uh huh. I just fuck. Now the first soldier, he looks at my mum and smiles. He realizes the family coming back on a Saturday night. My mum on the left, my brother on the right, then take my hands, and they just start to swing me. One step, two step, swing. Because I couldn't walk at this point, so they actually would swing me. I was going one step, two step, swing, and all this up to our house. Now, basically you could turn around and say, they shook the shock out of me for those five minutes walk. One step, two step, swing. One step, two step, swing. By the time five minutes later we were at home, I was actually laughing. And after that, every time we went and played badminton, on the way home they would have to always do one step, two step, swing. Uh -huh. I can tell you, thank you for those soldiers because that was one of the best memories I ever had with my mother and my brother together. Them just being perfect and making fun of it. Now, two or three years later, when I'm about nine years old, part of this with the barracks at the end of the street, then the soldiers walking around, then we actually have helicopters at night. So the helicopters would actually even fly over our houses with the big spotlights, making the streets at night into daylight. Now, I somehow got an interesting idea. We had a, a, a soldier as a friend, and they had these wonderful, fantastic big torch lights. This size, right? Eight massive Duracell <coughs> batteries went into these things. And at some point I just got the idea of, could I actually touch that one of those helicopters some night with this torchlight? Mm. So, yeah, somewhere around one o'clock in the morning, on some night where I happen to be awake, which quite often happened thanks to the helicopters flying over there, <laughs> um, I sneak down from my bed, go get the torch, and actually just wait until he comes close to our house. And as a wee nine-year-old then, I open the window, just wait. Okay, there he is. And shine the torch up. Me trying to hit the helicopter. Good thing and a bad thing at one go. I didn't try. I actually succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> so, fuck. Because the only problem with this was, the fucking pilot also noticed I'd hit him with the torchlight. So him thinking it's a terrorist wanting to shoot him down, he immediately flies for our house. And me going, fuck. 
<laughs> Turn the torchlight off, foot in the corner, close the window, run up the bed, blanket over my head. Uh -huh. <laughs> I never heard about it, so don't think they knocked on our door. Hallelujah. Um, great thing about living in war. Uh, it was one of the most adventurous, stupid ideas I'd ever had as a child. Uh huh. Great fun. Twelve years old. And for going into Belfast <coughs> and into the high streets and going shopping, it was a wee bit different for us. Because in the 70s and the 80s there had been bombs going off all over Belfast. So you could not actually drive into the high streets in Belfast, into the shopping centre seats, uh, shopping streets, because the army had blocked all the streets. <coughs> the only things that were like three were either buses or delivery vans. The delivery vans usually had the bombs in them, so it didn't have <laughs> <laughs> um, But it also meant, if you were a pedestrian, which of course every one was then, you actually had to go through a checkpoint. <coughs> And that meant man, woman, child actually had to walk up to the soldier and do that. Back then, they didn't have fantastic x-ray machines or whatever, so it was actually padding you down physically. Um, female policemen, they pad down the women. And then they would look up, open your shopping bags and then check everything. And this is how we even got into the shopping street. A dead normal shopping street. Uh-huh, like down at Marine Platz. Nothing special, just normal shop. And once you got into that shopping street, almost at every shop you had to go, wanted to go into, be it for a newspaper, a toy for Christmas, some clothes, then you actually had to stand again at each shop. Because each shop had at the door a security guy. So if you put up your arms again, and he would come with his metal detector up and down. So that's how we even got into a shop to buy something. <coughs> so by the time I was 12, I had done this about seven years. Automatic, you don't even look where the security guy is, you just do that and wait for him to say, on you go. So for the first time I go on a holiday outside of Northern Ireland. My parents take me to visit my auntie down in England in a small town called Eden Abbott on the south coast. So we're out shopping on the first day. <laughs> And my auntie doesn't know anything about the way Belfast was now. She'd been over there working for the British Air Force and everything. And she didn't know about it. So we go out with my auntie, my parents, my cousins. I'm all just going into the high street, the Newton Abbott. And I don't think about, hey, we can just walk straight up to the shop door. I didn't know this that much. But then everybody goes through the shop door and just keeps on walking. Me? Lee Michael, 12 years old, I just stop. <laughs> and I'm standing inside this door, standing there, blocking everybody behind me, uh -huh, just waiting. And I see my auntie, my parents, my cousins walking away. <laughs> and I'm now starting to get scared, because nobody's saying, move on. <laughs> nobody's saying you can go in. And they're leaving me on my own. <laughs> so, sooner or later, they're almost out of sight. But my auntie notices that I'm not there. And she looks around and sees this wee guy standing there. <laughs> <clears throat> and then she looks at my mum and goes, huh? Ah, you be a bit nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and my mum looks around and sees, oh, Michael, we don't have to do that here. Come on, let's go shopping. That was the first time I, in my whole life, actually discovered what normal life was like. Life outside war, life in peace. A normal time in a normal country. Please enjoy living. It's normal life. <laughs>